So far, the final section has shown a simple text view with whatever check amount the user entered. But now it's time for the important part of this project. We want that text view to show how much each person needs to contribute to the payment. There are a few ways we could solve this, but the easiest one happens to be the cleanest one, by which I mean it gives us code that's clear and easy to understand. We're going to add a computed property that calculates a total. This needs to do a small amount of mathematics. The total amount payable per person is equal to the value of the order plus tip percentage divided by a number of people. But before we can get to that point, we first need to pull out the values for how many people there are, what the tip percentage is, and the value of the order. That might sound easy, but there are some small wrinkles. First, as we've already seen, number of people is off by two. When it stores the value three, it means five people. Second, the tip percentage integer stores inside the tip percentages array rather than the actual tip percentage. And third, the check amount property is a string that the user entered, which might be a valid number like 20, it might be a string like fish, or it might even be empty. So we're going to create a new computed property called total per person that will be a double. And it will start by getting those three values above. First, add the computed property itself just before the body property. Var, total per person, returns a double. Then a comment, calculate the total per person here, and return zero. That sends back zero so your code doesn't break. But we're going to replace the calculate total person here comment with our calculations. Next, we can figure out how many people there are by reading number of people and adding two to it. Remember, this thing has the range two to 100, but it counts from zero, which is why we need to add the two. So, Start by replacing the comment with this. Let people count equals double number of people plus two. You'll notice that converts the resulting value to a double, so we can add everything up and divide it without losing accuracy. Next, we need to figure out the actual tip percentage. Our tip percentage property stores the value the user chose, but that's actually just a position in the tip percentages array. As a result, we'd look in tip percentages to figure out what they chose and again convert to a double so we can keep all our precision. So we'll add this below the previous line. Let tip selection equals double tip percentages tip percentage. The final number we need for our calculation is the value of their check. Now if you remember, this is actually a string right now because it uses a two-way binding to a text field. Although we wrote code to show only a decimal pad keyboard, there's nothing stopping creative users from entering invalid values in there, so we have to be careful how we handle it. What we want to have is another double of the check amount. What we actually have is a string that may or may not contain a valid double. It might be 22.50, it might be an empty string, or it might be the complete works of Shakespeare. It's a string, it can be pretty much anything at all. Fortunately, Swift has a simple way of converting a string to a double, and it looks like this. Let string value equals string 0.5. Let double value equals double string value. Yes, that might look easy enough, but there's a catch. The type of double value ends up being double question mark and not double. Yes, it's an optional. You see, Swift can't know for sure that a string contains something that can be safely converted to a double. So it uses optionality. If the conversion was successful, then our optional will contain the resulting value. But if the string is something invalid, fish, the complete works of Shakespeare, and so on, then the optional value will be set to nil. There are several ways we could handle the optionality here, but the easiest is to use the nil coalescing operator, double question mark, to ensure it's always a valid value. So let's add this code to the total per person computed property below the previous two. Let order amount equals double check amount nil coalescing zero. That'll attempt to convert check amount into a double, but if that fails for some reason, it'll use zero instead. Now that we have our three input values, it's time to do our mathematics. This takes another three steps. First, we can calculate the tip value by dividing order amount by 100 and multiplying by tip selection. Second, we can calculate the grand total of the check by adding the tip value to order amount. And third, we can figure out the amount per person by dividing the grand total by people count. Once that's done, we can return the amount per person and we're done. Replace return zero in the property with this. Let tip value equals order amount divided by 100 times tip selection. Let grand total equals order amount plus tip value. 
let amount per person equals grand total divided by people count. Return amount per person. Now that total per person gives us the correct value, we can change the final text in our table so it shows the correct text. So I'll replace this with text dollar total per person. Try running the app now and see what you think. You should find that because all the values that make up our total are marked with at state, changing any of them will cause a total to be recalculated automatically. Hopefully you're now seeing for yourself what it means that SwiftUI's views are a function of their state. When a state changes, the views automatically update to match. Before we're done, we're going to fix a small issue with our UI, which is the way the total price is shown. We're using a double for our amount calculations, which means Swift's giving us much more precision than we need. We expect to see something like 25.50, but instead see 25.500000. We can solve this by using a neat string interpolation feature that Swift UI adds. The ability to decide how a number ought to be formatted inside a string. These actually date way back to the C programming language, so the syntax is a little bit odd at first. We write a string called a specifier, giving it the value %.2f. That's C syntax to mean a two-digit floating point number. Very roughly, %f means any sort of floating point number, which in our case will be the entire number. An alternative is %g, which does the same thing, except it removes insignificant zeros from the end. 12.50 we've written as 12.5. Putting dot two into the mix is what asks for two digits after the decimal point, regardless of what they are. SwiftUI is smart enough to round those intelligently, so we still get good precision. Anyway, we want the total amount per person to use our new format specifier, so please modify the total text view to this. Total per person, comma, specifier, percent dot two F. Now we're on the project for the last time. We're done.